The wealth of Illinois is in her soil and her strength lies in its intelligent development. Early in the first half of the 20th century, a group of like-minded farmers from Kane County also saw the need for better education and agricultural improvements. Farmer Institutes of the day provided a forum for sharing agricultural knowledge on an annual basis, but more was needed and closer to home. Back in those early 1900s, we didn't have a lot of the research that we have today. The education was passed on from father to son. This group of farmers set out to create an organization that would look out specifically for farmers' interests. And on December 31st, 1912, Articles of Incorporation for the Kane County Farm Improvement Association were approved by the Secretary of State. The original articles set up a 32-member board, two farmers from each of the 16 townships. Its purpose? to conduct special investigations, experiments, and demonstrations relating to the soils, crop culture, and animal husbandry in Kane County. Judson P. Mason was the first president of the Kane County Farm Bureau. Early leaders wasted no time in securing the services of a farm advisor. They chose the superintendent of the soil experiment fields at the University of Illinois, who came on board in Kane County in June 1913. The first farm advisor of the King County Farm Improvement Association was a man by the name of Jerome Reedheimer. Farm productivity was the primary focus of early farm advisors who traveled the countryside testing the soil of Farm Bureau members, suggesting crop rotations, limestone, or other soil amendments. And to educate the people um, was a huge thing for Farm Bureau. It still is, and it will be 20 years from now. The organization got a boost in 1914 with passage of the Smith-Lieber Act. The act established a nationwide system of cooperative extension services connected to land-grant universities. Early farm advisors established the Illinois Association of County Agriculturalists in December 1913 with Reedheimer as president. In 1916, that group helped pave the way for the formation of the Illinois Agricultural Association, or IAA. Back in the early days, certainly around the turn of the century, there wasn't any organization of farmers. Farmers were a majority of the population in the country, but we were a lone minority out there when it came to anybody speaking up for the farmers. As Farm Bureau came online in, in the late teens and early 20s, they began organizing these various organizations to assist the farmer. Once organized, these farm leaders involved themselves in public policy at the local and state level. If Farm Bureau wasn't in there uh, pitching for us, I don't know who it would be, and I don't know what we would have, what we would end up with. IAA's success in the 51st General Assembly in 1919 to 1920 was phenomenal. 25 bills, 14 of them described as major, were passed with Farm Bureau support. The voice of the farmer was being heard and respected in Springfield. The thing that first impressed me was just the enormous amount of legislation that the organization reviews and takes position on. One thing that became very evident to me is Kane County is special. People respect us and that doesn't happen overnight. The Farm Bureau earned the respect of the, the uh, political leaders. Following the 1919 organization of the American Farm Bureau Federation in Chicago, the Kane County Farm Improvement Association changed its name to Kane County Farm Bureau. In 1922, the Kane County Farm News began appearing in members' mailboxes. This newsletter kept them informed on local farm news and events. In the decades since, Kane County Farm Bureau information services have evolved with publications for members, donors, public officials, affiliates, educators, and students, as well as online access to the organization 24-7. As early as the 1920s, Farm Bureau leaders supported the idea of affiliates and cooperatives to help farmers become more profitable. In 1923, the state passed the Agricultural Cooperative Act allowing farmers to form co-op organizations with bargaining power.
to buy and sell products for farm use at a reasonable cost. You know, it was organized for business. It, it, many times we said, it's not unusual for us to do the extraordinary. The impossible takes us a day or two longer. Henry McGuff of Maple Park was elected to the IAA Board of Directors in 1920. In 1924, McGuff was named the first president of IAA's first affiliated business enterprise, the Illinois Agricultural Auditing Association. IAAA was formed to audit grain elevators and farm-related enterprises to assure farmers payment for products delivered to these businesses. To better serve the needs of farmers across the state, the IAA formed a fire and casualty reinsurance company for farm property, an automobile insurance company, a life insurance company, and numerous other companies to purchase supplies and serum, as well as market milk, eggs, fruits, vegetables, grains, and livestock. Every year it seems to me that it gets the farm organization gets more and more important to the farmer than it was the year before. Farm Bureau also made great strides during this period to help farmers lower their seed costs, obtain quality fuels, and get better prices for their harvest. In 1929, a committee was formed that led to the creation of the Kane County Farm Service Company, with the Farm Bureau Executive Committee as its governing body. Later it merged with Kishwaukee Service Company to form Northern FS. Today the cooperative serves farms throughout northeastern Illinois and southwest Wisconsin as Conserve FS, a member of the Growmark system. Similarly, in 1932, IAA began to encourage the formation of county cooperative creameries. These efforts led to eventual consolidation into Prairie Farms Dairy, another successful affiliated cooperative business enterprise to serve farmer members. It's all run by farmers, controlled by farmers, and farmers reap the benefits. And to me, that's a pretty good package. Each decade brought new challenges to farmers and the Farm Bureau. The Great Depression and Dust Bowl threatened farmers' livelihoods. As the Depression deepened, Kane County Farm Bureau refunded a portion of member dues and accepted promissory notes for membership to allow payment of patronage refunds. In 1936, the Farm Bureau purchased the former Eastside School from the Geneva School District and moved into its new headquarters on State Street. 1941 saw the nation's attention focused on Kane County, International Harvester, and IAA gathered for the NBC National Farm and Home Hour, broadcast from the Clarence L. Dauberman Farm near Caneville. There, Dauberman was honored for being the first farmer in the United States to adapt a tractor, his farm all regular, to high compression, a feat he accomplished in 1934. He was presented a new Farmall H for his contribution to advancing agriculture. A bronze marker was placed on the front lawn by the IAA and Kane County Farm Bureau. For Kane County Farm Bureau, other enterprises, improvements, and agricultural services followed in rapid succession. I think it's complimentary to the Farm Bureau organization that they've made the changes throughout the years to address the concerns of the membership. By 1955, the Kane County Farm Bureau had outgrown its State Street location. The search began for a new building site. Land was purchased on Randall Road in St. Charles near the 4-H Fairgrounds and a new office building was erected. An open house for members was held November 9, 1958. Armed with fertilizer, crop protectants, and better seeds, tools, and knowledge, farmers struggled repeatedly with overproduction and low commodity prices in the post-war decades. New business services were needed to help farmers keep better records to maintain profitability. Again, a Kane County farmer was called on to chair the effort. Back in the, the 60s and the 70s, uh, a lot of farmers had a hard time keeping their head above water. But these decades also saw growth in educational, social, and leadership development opportunities and the addition of Young Farmer and Women's Committee activities and programs. I started farming in the 70s and remember well the uh, trials and challenges that we had in the 80s with very low commodity prices, high interest rates, very, very costly to do business. There wasn't a lot of money. Farmers didn't make much money in the 80s. 
Times like these made it essential that farmers' voices were heard in public policy decisions. And Illinois farmers chose a new IAA president in Kane County farmer John White, Jr. White had led the organization's resolutions process for a decade. I was just always impressed with the whole process that the, that the members developed the policy, but then it was uh, carried out by board members and ultimately staff when it came down to working with legislators and people in uh, the House at the state level uh, and of course uh, Congress at the federal level. Farm Bureau's member-driven process also helped local officials develop important public policy firsts for Illinois farmers right here in Kane County. Where do they go for their information? Farm Bureau. We're trusted and we're, we're regarded as experts in these fields. Illinois' first county ordinance to protect farms from nuisance lawsuits, first stormwater ordinance to protect farms from the impacts of adjacent development, first funded farmland protection program, and first farmland drainage assistance program, all originated in Kane County with input from Farm Bureau leaders. Everybody talks about grassroots. This is grassroots. It starts right down here and it moves right up to the state level and there's nobody telling us what to do, they're asking us what to do. This doesn't happen in other organizations. Through these decades, in addition to public policy work on farm legislation, leaders recognized the need to expand markets. Campaigns were developed to promote farm products, expand crop uses, develop export markets, and promote local foods. We fought to get ethanol for 25 years. The whole area of international trade was kind of there for the picking. And uh, I became very involved in that uh, through the American Farm Bureau Federation because I was on the executive committee there and sat on the board of directors. The IAA organized its first trade mission to Europe in 1964 and now organizes annual market study tours for farmers to build trade relationships across the globe. On the home front, accurate information about farming became more important than ever. Farm Bureau increasingly turned its attention to education for the general public, consumers, students, and teachers. Being one of the collar counties around here, we have so many people that live in the area that knew nothing about agriculture. Consumer education programs throughout the 60s and 70s increased the demand for classroom materials. In 1984, the Kane County Farm Bureau Women's Committee responded with its first Ag Days Expo for fourth graders. Today, it's the association's biggest and longest running educational program held each year on the campus of Mooseheart Child City and School. As the Ag in the Classroom program grew, new volunteers, methods, and resources were needed. In 1989, a not-for-profit foundation was formed to provide funding for college scholarships and Ag in the Classroom programs. Today, an annual raffle is the largest of several fundraisers that help raise friends and funds for the foundation, which has provided hundreds of thousands of dollars to advance scholarship, education, and service to the community. In 1996, the Farm Bureau helped form AgTech at Teeple Barn, a not-for-profit to preserve and restore the 1885-era 16-sided barn in Elgin for ag education purposes. 1999 saw the addition of the first annual Summer Ag Institute for teachers. It's important and in particular with Ag in a Classroom program because essentially you're touching and educating the teachers of the teachers. So if you can give them a little flavor of what really goes on in on your operation, hopefully those teachers will take that learning experience uh, back to their classroom. Plans for a destination agricultural experience were dashed when Teeple Barn was destroyed in a storm in 2005. A year later, a brand new program was born when the wide front lawn of the Farm Bureau was first used for Touch a Tractor. Well, the Touch a Tractor in the springtime, being you have huge equipment, right out along Randall Road. It draws a lot of people in, a lot of people that have never sat on a tractor, never sat on a combine, or seen one up close. 
Technological advances over the years have allowed farmers to reduce their environmental footprint and improve farming efficiencies. In turn, the organization has kept its mission and programs current to reflect the needs of its members. In 1944, Kane County Farm Bureau recommended the establishment of a soil conservation district. In recent years, our volunteers have assisted the district and the county in the collection and removal of used oil and tires from the waste stream. Such activities exemplify the association's commitment to building a strong community. I found that if you want to know what's going on, you've got to get right in the middle of it. And Farm Bureau's right in the middle of it. Kane County Farm Bureau members always have been active in making their communities better places to live and have extended a helping hand internationally. From post-World War I donations to the starving people of Europe and Asia and through Church World Service's crop donations in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, members have continued their outreach by helping to feed the hungry in countries around the world. Today that tradition continues with an annual shopping spree featuring local legislators, food drives at Farm Bureau events, and most recently through the association's Harvest for All initiative. Farm Bureau saw Harvest for All as an opportunity to do several things. First, restock the shelves of local food pantries. Second, to promote goodwill for farms and farmers. And third, to remind everybody where their food originates. It's been a very successful program. We've received national recognition. In 2011, the American Society of Association Executives recognized Harvest for All as an exemplary program. The Summit Award was presented at a ceremony at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. It's not the only Kane County volunteer effort to receive national recognition. In the six years leading up to its centennial, five Kane County Farm Bureau programs have earned the County Activities of Excellence designation by the American Farm Bureau Federation. Heading into the association's 100th year, members set a goal of reaching yet another milestone, the equivalent of one million meals provided to local food pantries. I think it shows that the agriculture community, the farmers in Kane County are concerned about their neighbors. After a century of work, the farmer leaders of the Kane County Farm Bureau continue to look for new ways to improve their operations, their industry, and the community. As a Farm Bureau organization, we're just going to have to continue to try to educate the consumers that it is a transparent process, uh, the marketplace works. Well, there's a lot of challenges ahead of us yet, as there has been since, you know, we were formed a hundred years ago, and the biggest reason why the organization was formed, to meet those challenges. There's always going to be a need for a Farm Bureau organization that's willing to stand up and educate you and go forward and fight for what's good for the members and for the people. Because we try to be good stewards to the land and we want to have the land there for the next generation. But Farm Bureau will be here for a long, long time that I know. Forward! <laughs>